Continuing from the story of the wise men that came to see Jesus, we find them inside the palace. And they had come to meet Jesus in the palace. And while in the palace, they were seeking where Jesus would be, would be born because obviously he wasn't there. And when they inquired about that to the king, remember, these are kingly people. And so they had access to the then king, which is Herod. Herod called his wise men, <laughs> Herod called his wise men, the priests and the scribes. And the priests and the scribes told the wise men and Herod where Jesus was to be born. Verse 5, they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. That also is coming from Micah chapter 5, verse 2. I have them all listed right here. Chapter 5, verse 2. So, I want to ask the question, what is the significance of Bethlehem? Why Bethlehem? Of all the cities, why Bethlehem? Number one, as I just mentioned, to fulfill prophecy. Micah 2 tells us that the Messiah, the king after David's line, will be born in Bethlehem to shepherd the people of Israel. The good shepherd of Israel would be born in Bethlehem. It was prophesied. The priests and the scribes knew it. And they were able to tell the wise men to go there, to find him there. And the wise men, when they took off, they found that the, the star led them to exactly where Jesus was, at Bethlehem. Okay. To fulfill prophecy. Bethlehem is a significant city. Bethlehem is the city of King David. And Bethlehem is also the hometown of Joseph. And so it is very significant. I was reading just the other day that it might have been the hometown of both Mary and Joseph. Bethlehem is the hometown of King David. And if you want to trace it back further, you will find that King David's story regarding Bethlehem starts with people who are much older than him, with his predecessors, with Ruth, in the book of Ruth. I believe that is his great-grandfather or great-grandmother of David. And then eventually through David's line and in David's hometown, Jesus, the Davidic king, would be born. It is to fulfill prophecy of Micah 5, verse 2, and the prophetic expectation of the Davidic king of the whole Old Testament. Fitting that Jesus would be born in King David's hometown. Right? To fulfill prophecy. Second, To highlight the fact that God uses the small and the weak. Notice that that has been a part of the narrative all the way through. That Jesus is born in a manger. Jesus uses, God uses shepherds to welcome him. The lowliest of the low. If you look throughout the scriptures, both old and new, God uses the weak to confound the strong. Your weakness is ultimately not a weakness at all, but it is a strength. And that's how you ought to see it. Wherever you are weak in your life, if you are ill, if you are bankrupt, if you are situationally in an awkward position, it is an opportunity to lean into the power of God and find that in your weakness, He, He is strong. That's God's character, and that's what Bethlehem proclaims. Why do you say that, Pastor Paul? Look, it says, O Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. You are by no means the least. 
Why does it say that? Because Bethlehem has historically been a very insignificant city, not much more than a village. Some estimates say that during Jesus' time, there would not have been many, many more than a hundred people or so, or maybe a little bit more than that on the festival seasons when people would come to nearby Jerusalem. But the people who lived there, population, only a, a couple of hundred, max. Small city. So what important role could this small city play? It would play the role of the birth of the coming Messiah, the expectation of all the people of God. Yeah. Surely, our God is the God who comes to a person shaking in fear in a hideout and takes that person and calls him a warrior. It's what God does. God takes a shaking reed like the Apostle Peter and makes him rock. That's what God does. God takes a God hater, a church persecutor, turns his world upside down and makes him the most effective apostle known to man in the history of the church, the Apostle Paul. That's what God does. One poem says that when God wants to take a man and shake a man and thrill a man, he takes him and he breaks him. Maybe some of you are going through that breaking process today. Don't let your weakness, don't let your brokenness stop you from your usefulness. It is the process. This is how we grow. And as we lean in and lean in and lean in, we find that we become more and more useful. God makes us more and more useful in his hand. All right, that's the second reason, to highlight that God's strength is made perfect in weakness. In the weakness, the seeming weakness and insignificance of the city of Bethlehem, the beauty of the Messiah is on display, begins. Finally, the meaning of the name. The meaning of the name is significant. Why Bethlehem? Because it means the house of bread. The house of bread. <laughs> In the story of Ruth, it is very, very interesting. The hometown is Bethlehem, the house of bread, but they're experiencing a lack of bread, famine, that drives them away from the house of bread. And eventually, because they were driven away from the house of bread, when they return to Bethlehem, the house of bread, they are empty and broken. So whether or not there is bread in this house, the meaning of the city is that this is the house of bread. And there was a famine at that time. And there may have been subject to those kinds of weaknesses throughout time. But during this time, more than anybody else knew, and only the wise men here seem to have an indication, this house of bread was full. This house of bread, this Bethlehem, was full of not any bread, but the bread of eternal life. Jesus, how fitting, who is the, the bread of eternal life, the bread of life, that he should be born in the house of bread. As we feed on the bread of life today, let's remember Bethlehem. Let's remember that Jesus came to fill places like Bethlehem, to fill people like Bethlehem, to fill you and me to the overflow with the bread of life, that we too, like him, might become vessels of, the, of giving life-giving satisfaction. Let's sing this Christmas carol together. On the day of Jesus' birth, glory filled the shepherd's view. Angel praises filled the earth. Christ is born, it's me. Shepherds ran to see 
came to a lowly manger. Lord, you came to a lowly city, Bethlehem. And Lord, bread of life, you came to this lowly body, our lowly body, the house, our lowly bodies, each and every one. You came to fill us, and you do fill us. Help us to drink and to eat fully of you to the overflow that we might serve this church and serve this world from the overflow of your goodness. We celebrate you today. Jesus, in your beautiful, matchless name, we pray. Amen. <laughs>